We are back with our future guest, Dana Avdor, head of trading at Barometer Capital Management. Dana, let's um, continue the conversation in, in terms of where you're going to place your money. But I think it also centers around a lot of the central bankers and the central bank discussions and whether economies are strong enough or not. And there's quite a few people say, you know, it, things aren't as good as we, we think, mm -hmm. right? Well, that's, what pe that's the argument, a, that's right? That's the narrative out there right now. Yeah. So, so let's get your view. Yeah, so that we, we see it too from clients and from the street, you know, the constant battle about, you know, why the market should set off, sell off, why, uh, how many, even on how many years this bull market is, is a bull market. Okay. Some say eight years, some say three years, some say five years. Um, the economic data, why the economic data is weak, but really, um, and the market's not selling off. And I'll just point to transports. Uh, breaking out and machinery and all the economic, uh, economically sensitive sectors, chemicals, um, technologies doing fine even though it checked back. Financials are doing okay for the reasons that we can discuss rates mm -hmm. and, and, and normalization of regulations. So there's so many sectors doing so well, the earnings are fine. But yet we're still battling this massive bearishness about why the market should sell off. And you see the market actually is not selling off. Mm -hmm. um, and there are some very good reasons. So what I would tell people mm -hmm. and viewers is there's narratives out there as to just sell it because it's been going on too long or for some, for some length of time. But that's not a good enough reason. If the earnings are there and the economic data is there, and the economic surprise index, for example, that people are watching, remember it's a surprise index. It doesn't talk about the actual level of, of economic data. It just means that sometimes expectations get ahead of the actual data. Okay. So when you're looking at PMIs over 50, just because somebody expected or the consensus expected 58 and it came in at 56, that doesn't make the data bad. Mm -hmm. Um, or if you're looking at unemployment uh, numbers, like the non-farm payroll numbers that we were talking. So you can pick things out of it that could be negatives. But bottom line, we're looking at 4.4% unemployment. We're looking at a little bit of wage uh, earn, uh, growth. Mm -hmm. Those are all positives, may not be very big positives or wage growth that huge, but if it was, mm -hmm. we'd be talking about inflation. Right. So it's at, a, it's, a, it's at a good level as long as earnings can continue to work. And now you might get a little bit of sales growth as well, uh, not just the margin uh, peak. And we can pick out the negatives and talk about, oh, but margins have peaked and so forth. But it's okay because mm -hmm. absolute dollars matter too. So if you increase top line, um, and things are normalizing, that's fine. And the fact that, you know, those CCAR uh, results from uh, the U.S. banks, that some of them are actually able to pay out more than 100% of their earnings, that is a vote of confidence um, that their balance sheets are okay mm -hmm. uh, by the Fed. And so they can continue and pay back uh, to mm -hmm. shareholders. We've had some great numbers out of Canada. We have some great news out of Canada. We had Air Canada, for example, talk um, uh, trade really well last week. Yep. Airlines is a great sector to be in, both in the U.S. and in Canada. Air Canada, Southwest Airlines is what we hold. Um, mm -hmm. There's lots of uh, investments. So don't sell your investments on the theoretical narrative, look at what's actually happening. Do you think that um, we are, though, in an environment where the company-specific story is even more important because of the economic environment perhaps not being as smooth for all sectors? What I'm hearing from you is that it's actually a little bit more broad-based than, than what I just said might suggest. In other words, you, you can own more stocks than you could have thought maybe three months ago even. Um, I think it's broad-based enough, uh, but you have to do your homework and your fundamentals, and you can't be the investor that's everywhere all the time. Mm -hmm. You do have to make calls, and to make money, you do have to be right. So um, there's going to be sectors that don't work and sectors that do work, and there's that dispersion of returns within sectors. Mm -hmm. So. Correlations are low and volatility is low. And some of that is also because of the passive money that has entered the market in the last decade, let's say. But outside of that, um, there's going to be sectors that work. And you as an investor and us at, as, as asset managers need to do our homework and be in what works. Not everything is going to work. Right. So uh, fundamental uh, research and being right in the right sector is of utmost importance. Diana, from a top-down perspective, um, geographic perspective, where do you want to have the weighting of your money today? We currently have uh, a lot of our investor investments in the U.S. 
um, 10 to 20 percent in Canada. Only. Only. Only 10 to 20 percent in Canada. Only 10 to 20 percent in Canada. And from a global perspective, if you run a global portfolio, that is not an over, that is not an underweight. That's an overweight. Right. But we're Canadian. So we do love our home base more. Plus, we're priced in Canadian dollars, so um, there is a natural um, anchor there. But we are 10 to 20 percent. A lot of that has to do with preferreds and corporates, things that are stable and provide yield for our investors. Um, in Let me terms, just stop you there for one yeah. second. It doesn't sound then that you're really buying into the Canadian fundamental story in terms of buying companies because the fundamentals are so strong here. If you only have 10 to 20. 15 to 20 percent and you're really buying the preferreds or the corporates what do you what are you really telling me well it's a tough uh, it's a tough market it's been like i said one of the worst performing markets in the developed uh world mm -hmm. canada has been it is extremely we we know this is extremely tilted in commodities until oil works uh it's going to be a hard time and now we're trying to uh slow down the housing market mm -hmm. so our canadian banks are extremely well regulated and extremely well capitalized never uh, going to say anything bad about them. They has, have a great yield as a long-term investor, multi-decade, you can stay with them. But if you're a tactical asset manager and you have 40 to 60 names you want to follow and, mm -hmm. and, and uh, actively manage, um, there are a lot of opportunities elsewhere. And so, um, and that's where we go. Uh, some Europeans, some Jap Japan, and um, actually um, uh, India. Okay, what, uh, what specifically are you looking at in Europe? Um, well, we have a general IFA um, uh, fund. Um, the whole sector has done really, really well, including the currency. So uh, we, we're not, mm -hmm. th th there are all these ETFs that hedge back to local currency. Um, you didn't need to do that. Yeah. Um, Japan has been doing really well. Economic data has been coming in great. Um, and, uh, and India is growing at 7% with a population that's uh, industrializing and and uh, developing, and so great market. Diana, with respect to the United States, the sectors that you like, yeah, you like airlines. We like Sounds airlines. like you like financials. Yes. Um, tech. We like tech. What do you want we to have avoid? Taken down, we have taken down uh, our tech weight um, uh, to repurchase uh, and increase our weight in financials. It has never gone, it has never been, uh, uh, there has never been no weight, but mm -hmm. we just, uh, we just reallocated some of the, some of the funds. And in terms of airlines, there are really, uh, we own Southwest, and like I said, Air Canada too, in uh, Canada, as a Canadian, that's a great Canadian, if you wanted a Canadian investment. They're in a really uh, great situation with Air Canada costs. Um, debt is in the U.S. dollars, for example, Canadian dollar strength helps them. Um, the oil weakness helps them as well, and, and they're really restructuring. In terms of Southwest, um, you know, a consumer is doing okay. Uh, business travel is on the rise. Mm -hmm. um, so um, it's kind of a golden opportunity um, sure. to be there. Okay. In terms of the financials, you saw the CCAR. Um, they're reporting. We'll see how that comes out. Those are that's going to be a very important trading day on Friday. Do you like the big money center banks in the United States, or do you like any of the community banks? I've um, had some conversations about those, which I think are really interesting, or the or the regionals. Um, we'll we'll stay with large cap for now, and uh, and let it play out. Uh, although you know, you look at Russell 2000 today, for example, and several days already has been started weak and and kind of mm. rallied. So there is, um, and it tends to uh, tends to point to risk appetite when uh, you start going down the capitalization uh, yeah. ladder. So, uh, but JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, City, Bank America, uh, I mean, uh, you don't need to take risk. Uh, you don't need to take small cap risk. Um, these guys are undervalued enough mm -hmm. to have the kind of potential return that you could potentially get from a smaller company. Okay, Dana, great to see you. Thanks so much Thanks, for coming in. Thank me. you.